it's almost September 1st, and as you all know, September 1st is the first day of Hogwarts. And in our world, about this time, everyone is going back to school as well. But for the first time since I was two, if you count pre-K, I'm not going back to school. I graduated college, and at least for this year, I'm not going to grad school. So as I watch my friends and the people I follow on Tumblr and all the little kids in my neighborhood with their Justin Bieber backpacks going back to school, I can't help but feel a little... Empty is maybe the word. For anyone who has gone to an organized school for most of their life, the first year not going at whatever age for whatever reason is a bit disorienting. It's a major disruption to something that has been your annual schedule for possibly two decades, and I don't think it's something people really think about, but it's kind of a big deal. When Harry, Ron, and Hermione didn't go back to Hogwarts for their seventh year, they were so overwhelmed that they spent months wandering around the wilderness looking for vintage accessories. Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure I know a few hipsters who did the same thing after they left school. To be serious though, I remember being really sad that they weren't going back to Hogwarts. In a sort of Mrs. Weasley way, I was a bit sad because even though I knew they needed to save the world, I felt they should finish their education first. But as a reader, I was just sad because in the last book we weren't gonna have another year at Hogwarts. No feasts or Quidditch or Peeves. I might have also been extra sentimental because the last book came out in the summer before my senior year of high school. I think we can all agree that at least for the first read-through when we were trying to finish as fast as possible to avoid spoilers but still savor every moment, all those chapters in the woods felt pretty dull and kinda disappointing. I was so sick of reading about all the different forests and how they were surviving from Hermione's purse and how for so long they just weren't finding any horcruxes. I mean, give me a cup of tea with Hagrid in a midnight adventure. I'll even take a potions class, anything. But to be honest, that's a pretty fair representation of postgraduate life, especially during the job search. But even once you have a job, cool as it may be, it's probably not the end game job you're aspiring to. So you do just kind of move along day by day working towards this sort of tangible goal in the future that you're not entirely sure about or how to get to. Like the Dumbledore in your life might have told you some things and helped you out as much as he could like he did Harry, but there's never an exact precedent and he couldn't prepare you for everything. So most days just seem kind of repetitive and like nothing's really happening yet. Like unless you have an unbelievably exciting job right after graduating, more than likely your day-to-day -day life is going to be a lot more boring than school was. Simply because you're basically only doing one thing all day versus having four to eight different classes and activities and you're not constantly surrounded by all your friends. But I'm not meaning to say that when you're no longer in school everything is just sad and difficult and unfulfilling. Entirely. Harry, Ron, and Hermione literally spent the year soul searching. They were searching for parts of Voldemort's soul, but I might as well take this metaphor as far as I can now that I've begun. The point is, when you've left school, you realize how huge the world is. In the case of Harry, Ron, and Hermione, you realize just how many forests it has. You realize how many options there are for jobs, like how many places you can hide a horcrux, but also that, like a horcrux, you can't seem to find a job anywhere. And you hear so much competing advice, things you're sure you should have learned in school, like the legend of the Deathly Hallows. It's overwhelming to think you'll choose one thing and miss out on another, but you can't sit in a tent for nine chapters trying to work out the right decision, especially if you don't have a magical handbag that provides you with food, clothes, and lodging. The first couple of years out of school are going to be times of great self-discovery no matter what you do, so my plan thus far has been to do anything, everything, any opportunity that flies my way, I grab it. A lot of times being out of school is like being alone in the wilderness without a clear objective. And it is sad to watch friends going back to school, doing the fun things you used to do, and having the comfort of familiarity. But fortunately for us, unlike Harry, we don't have to save the world. All we have to do is live our lives and maybe try to be as happy, healthy, and fulfilled as possible in doing so. Before I go, I do have a few quick things to say. One, a person who is actually going back to Hogwarts is Kelly. If you watched her video on Wednesday, Kelly is leaving to go to Hogwarts this weekend. Yes, this weekend, because this weekend is September 1st, duh. But that means she will no longer be making weekly videos here on the HPA's channel, because of course, as you all know, electronics kind of go haywire and malfunction around all of the magic, so that makes vlogging from Hogwarts very uh, 
difficult. But when she can, Kelly will be making a couple of videos. She'll be kind of like our own British correspondent, our very own John Oliver. And Julian and I will be moving to uploading videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and all of this is starting next week. Last thing, please check out our Indiegogo page. We are fundraising for our Equality for the Win campaign, and we are so close to our goal of $50,000. There are tons of awesome perks that you can get for donating. We have items from the Star Kids, including Darren Chris, as well as from Ivana Lynch, from John and Hank Green, from Maureen Johnson, from Wizard Rockers, and Potter Puppet Pals. Check it all out at equalityforthewin.org. Thank you so much for all of your support and donations thus far, and Julian, I'll see you on Tuesday.